through the whoop takeover. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love Wu Tang, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today we're going to be talking about Wu Tang and American Saga Season 3, Episode 1. This is the recap. Now, I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. Now, we'll be dropping an episode 2 recap probably tomorrow. We're going to watch each of these episodes and break them down for you guys and just go over them. They released three episodes, so I know everybody's probably catching up on, you know, the new season. But overall, man, this was a solid episode. We're starting to see the business take off. And it's a lot of stress for your boy Bobby. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of stress trying to get all this stuff out at the same time. We know a lot of his music got flooded. And it's a, you know, it's a struggle. Your boy ODB, he going through it, man. He is going through it. He cannot keep himself focused. But hopefully in the next episode, Bobby will be able to get his mind right in order for them to start working on music and to get that album ready. Now, the title of the episode is called, I Can't Go to Sleep. And the description of the episode reads... Following six months in the wake of the season two finale, we find Rizza and the Wu-Tang Clan have moved out of Satin Island to a mansion in the woods of New Jersey. Despite the massive success of their recently released album, they've only just begun. So those are the key elements of this episode. We know Rizza was not playing around with his music stuff. I mean, he was barely getting any sleep, but every now and then you need some type of break. You need to relax and just enjoy life. And for a short moment, we saw that in this episode. But as I told you guys, I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points. And if I miss anything, let me know down below. So what do we see in episode one? The episode starts out with them showing us RZA and the whole flood, the floppy disc. It wasn't, you know, good for your boy. You know what I'm saying? All that work. I mean, he pretty much had everybody's albums all on these files. And now he has to figure out how he's going to fix all of this. Some even say if this flood never happened... We would never have got some of the music we got from Wu-Tang. So I guess maybe the flood did what it needed to do. Then we get to Ray and they're talking about Method Man. We know Method Man is on tour. So that's why we are not able to see him in this episode. And I guess the tour end up going a little bit longer because his album is getting very close to going platinum. And we see the whole billboard with all the dates of the other rappers and when they're supposed to be releasing their albums. ODB was supposed to already have his album done, but it's not because we know ODB and Bobby, they're still not on speaking terms after what happened um, at the end of season two when Bobby signed him to Elektra and not Def Jam. So, of course, they still going at it. Then Ray brings out the OG, triple OG George Foreman Grill from the 90s. And you already know back in the 90s, this George Foreman Grill, it was big, man, especially when it came out. I mean, it was legendary. It was just funny to see him cook on it and him to just bring it up. Now, we get to Bobby and your boy Inspector Deck. They're back there listening to music, and it seems like Inspector, he's just like, man, it ain't sounding right. He wants his own style. We know Bobby is still struggling because of the flood and trying to get the music to sound right and to be better. Inspector, he just wants his music to be his own type of style, similar to Bobby's first single, and he's telling him he can help him out with the floppy disk as far as them getting them, you know, red. But Bobby tells him, hell nah. He said, we can't take this to nobody because all they're going to do is steal the music. So he's not going to do that at all. But we know when Bobby left, we can just tell a specter was going to take those discs and get somebody to read them. Now, Bobby and Divine are having a conversation about Dirty. We know ODB and him still not speaking. And he's telling him, like, look. Do we got anything? We got any tracks or anything? His album was supposed to be done two months ago. And of course, Bobby's like, look, man, we can't really worry about that because I haven't even talked to the guy. He just wants to focus on Ray's deal and getting his stuff done. But it was funny that your boy Divine, he gave up all those credit cards. And I'm looking like, man, you already know they about to spend all this money. They supposed to be paying the money back. But I just got a feeling it's not going to end well. And based off this episode, we already seen them spending a whole lot of money on top of that, Bobby got this mansion out there in those woods. I mean, a lot of money is being taken out. This is why Divine is telling Bobby, like, look, we got to make some moves. We got to get some more work done. They do talk about Method Man's album about to go platinum, and they're supposed to be getting some money from that. But the money they're going to get from that, they said Method Man gets 50%, and then they got to split that other 50% across eight members and expenses. I mean, it's a lot of money being made, but it's a whole lot more getting spent as of right now in my opinion and 
Bobby is telling Divine, like, look, I need you to go and talk to Rifkin and just tell him we want 400000 for Ray's deal, not 300000 And now that's what Divine is going to have to do. But Bobby's going to sit back. He's not going to go himself. Instead, he's just going to stay back home and try to get more music done. But it just really seemed like he was stressing out a lot when it came to that music in this episode. Then we get to your boy, Dennis, a.k.a. Ghostface Killer, and he got the robe on. Y'all know in this season, they trying to make sure they show us the characters in full effect. He's talking about this is the new style. He's going to be rocking it. And he actually wears this outfit to the club. Then we get back to a Spectre. He goes to this company to get the floppy disk read. And they are talking about they've done work for NASA and all this stuff like that. And he's really confident that he's going to be able to get this music off this floppy disk. But as Bobby told him, all these people are going to do is steal it. Just keep it here. And based on how this episode ended, Bobby may have been right. Then we get to Steve and Divine. Of course, Divine is trying to get a deal for Ray. He wants 400000 And of course, Steve is telling him, well, he's going to have to go to RCA and talk to the people. And he wants him to meet him there so they can go over some numbers in order to get that deal to go through. Then we get to Bobby and Mecca. She's cleaning up his room. She tells him he hasn't slept in his room in over a week. And he has no concept of time at all. I mean, that's because all he does is music. We see in his notepad on the ODB page, ain't nothing in there. So you already know he wants to get this music done with his cousin, but they're still not speaking. It's still some issues that they have to discuss. And speaking of ODB, he having a good old time up in the strip club. I mean, he's in there turning up, y'all. Y'all know what happened. Your boy ODB was in there getting his freak on. I mean, he was high as a kite. And he ain't thinking about music. That's all I'm going to say. He ain't thinking about no music while he's living his best life from the looks of it. Then we get to your girl Cherie and Dennis and she's telling him, whatever you do, make sure you come back home. We know he ain't been there in three days. She just wants to make sure he comes back home to the family. She's rubbing his head. And in this episode, it seems like he had a lot of migraines or whatever, but he definitely has somebody to help him out with that issue later on in the episode. Now, Divine, he goes to RCA to meet up with Steve. The people in this building, they was looking at him kind of funny or whatever. He didn't like it, but once Steve came out, they end up going in the room and having a conversation, and they got the deal for Ray. He will be getting that 400000 and Divine tells him, like, man, if you weren't with me, I probably would have never got that deal. And he's tired of it. Like, he wants to know what he needs to do to make sure he can make these deals and, you know, do business with these people. And Steve, he kept it real. He's like, look, just show up here every day. Make them get used to seeing your face. That way, you can make these moves with these people. You can get that experience and you can continue to expand this whole Wu-Tang movement. And that's exactly what Divine did. He was not playing around. He made sure he showed up once again later on in the episode. Then we get to power and he wants to expand this whole woo wear, make sure that their business is able to make a lot of money. We see Tommy Hilfiger up in there and he wants to make sure they get their brand up in there. And in this whole episode, he was pretty much talking about business with everybody that was a part of the group, telling them that they're not going to always be rapping forever and they have to think about different ways to make money. He does talk to the owner of the store as far as expanding the brand there, but she wants to get some numbers. She wants to know what he's doing out in the streets as far as sales. And, you know, once he's able to bring those numbers back to her, maybe they can work something out. But it's always funny to see this guy in this show as power because we know he played in power as Ray Ray. I just can't unsee it no matter what. He will always be Ray Ray in my eyes. Now, your boy ODB, he wakes up in the strip club. That means he done passed out, went to sleep, wakes up. He's talking to the janitor. And of course, he has to get up out of there. I mean, he's having a crazy episode, man. He's living like there's no tomorrow. And the crazy part is, it's probably going to get worse, especially just based off the real ODB. Y'all know once that success starts to come in even more, he's probably going to turn up even more. Then we get back to your boy Bobby. He hears you God calling him. So he goes outside to have a conversation with him. And you God is pretty much telling him like, look, man, you got to appreciate everything that you're doing. Like, let's appreciate life. I mean, we got this pool. We got the Wu logo in the pool. Just have fun every now and then. They shake hands and all of a sudden Wu God pulls him straight into the pool. He's, you know, swimming. We see all the floppy discs. And Bobby, man, he just can't get away from water messing around with his discs. And of course, he wakes up and realizes like, man, I just had a very bad dream. And maybe he does need a break. Maybe he needs to get himself up out of there in order to get his mind together. 
Then we get to your boy Divine. He tells Bobby that the 400,000 deal went through. Of course, Ray wants to celebrate. It's going to be a party. And he says RCA, they want his album out by summer 95. And Bobby's like, hell nah, that can't happen. Like, I got too much stuff to do. I can't do it. You need to go back and tell them that this can't go down like that. Divine is like, man, that's going to make us look like amateurs. He ain't really trying to be doing all that. On top of that, he has some more news. And that news is that Def Jam wants him to make a remix to All I Need with Method Man and Mary J. They need another remix. Your boy Bobby's like, look, I already done that. Divine is telling him like, yeah, you did. But it's more for the streets or whatever. We need something, you know, for the radio. And I believe your boy Puff Daddy, he did like the radio remix, a Puff Daddy version or whatever. And Bobby did the Razor Sharp Mix version of that song. So Bobby's like, screw it. Tell them somebody else can do it. And that's exactly what ended up happening. I mean, he was just pissed off. It's like, it's entirely too much work. He can't keep doing all this. He needs to focus on the people that he have in hand. More importantly, he needs to be getting in contact with his cousin Dirty. And speaking of ODB, he runs into a bootlegger out there selling some music. And he's pissed off. He's like, look, you got to take all this down. He has the Method Man album out there. And he's telling ODB, like, look, this is not even yours. Why do you even care? And he had to tell him, like, look, we brothers, you know what I'm saying? We Wu-Tang, no matter what. His album is my album. You ain't about to be out here selling all this bootleg material. Now, Mecca knows Bobby has not used his mom's blanket. She knows he's still been on the same stuff. I mean, all he's focused on is music. He ain't taking showers. He's stanking. He is trying to give her a kiss. And she's like, look, I draw the line right there. Like, you got to take a shower unless you don't want to be clapping those cheeks. Bobby's like, screw all that. I'm not sacrificing that. Let me hop up in that shower. And I don't blame him. Hell, I would have took two of them. And your boy Bobby hopped up in that shower. He was getting it on with your girl Mecca. He clapped those cheeks. He had a good old time. And hell, he needed it. I told y'all, this man, all he's doing is stand in that studio. Get out. Have a good old time. You know what I'm saying? Celebrate a little bit. Just relax. And it seems after that, your boy Bobby kind of calmed down. He was doing good for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? His whole mood changed. Your boy Inspector told him he took that floppy disk to a company that works for NASA or whatever, and they should be good. But Bobby's like, man, they probably stealing his music. He goes back to the company and the guy tells him they could not retrieve the material. And I told y'all, I mean, look at this guy right here. He probably stole the music, just like Bobby mentioned. Then we get to your boy Power. He brings a truck that has two cars on the truck, a box full of Cristal. I mean, they're living a great life and they are enjoying this party for sure. Then we get inside of the party, we see a new character. Her name is Karina. She's talking about how she was in the video Around the Way Girl. And we know Karina is played by Soraya. And this is the second show that I review that she's in. We know she's in BMF as Lori. And now she's in Wu-Tang as Karina. And she's at your boy, y'all. Ghostface, she's trying to get at him. He knows it. And he's trying to just walk away. But we know he has a migraine. And she's like, look, I can fix that. And for a moment, I'm looking like, okay, he about to clap those cheeks just like that. And she's like, nah, not like that. She rubs his head. And then we see Ray, he walks past and he's looking like, man, like you slipping up. Like you cannot allow yourself to fall for this because we know Bobby and Divine, they're probably going to be pissed off knowing that you messing around with another girl. It hasn't got there yet, but I'm going to tell you right now, based on how she's moving, it just may get there, y'all. And Cherie's going to be pissed off. Because she's going to be like, I was rubbing your head and you was getting all mad. But now you got another girl rubbing your head and you all happy. It's going to be issues. Now we get to your boy Divine. He goes back to the RCA office. And now he's making conversation with these people. He's talking about things that they can relate to in order to make that connection with them. That way, when he walk up in there, they ain't looking all crazy. They're going to be like, that's that dude. Let's have a conversation. And I believe it's going to you know, create better opportunities for him in the future. Now, we get to your boy Buster Rhymes. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about Buster Rhymes in this episode. I think he was all right. He was talking about where is ODB because he's like, look, it'd be cool if we can make a track together. Of course, Bobby doesn't know where he's at because he has not had a conversation with him in a while. And they continue just to party and celebrate. And then we see the two sweetest girls that's kicking it with Ray. They're listening to other music. And he's like, hell nah, we don't do that up in here. We only listen to Wu-Tang. That's it. They're telling him you got to be ready for the competition. Like you don't want to listen to the competition. Hell, they even telling him about the albums from other artists that's going to be coming out around the same time. His album is going to be dropping. And they're kind of surprised that he does not know what the competition is doing because they're going to have to choose 
if they're going to get his album or the next person's album. I'm looking like, dang, these girls know exactly what they're doing. Maybe you need to be watching them. They can't be trusted. But they did have some good points on what they were talking about as far as the competition in whose album you're going to be getting. Meanwhile, ODB done got caught slipping. He was about to buy some drugs. The boys, they pulled up on him. He's like, look, I ain't do nothing wrong. They start chasing him because he start running. He's able to get away, but then he runs into a dog in this building. He's trying to tell the dog to be quiet. All of a sudden, this man jumps out the window. It is crazy, y'all. It is crazy. He falls, and look at him, man. He ain't looking too good. He ain't looking too good at all. And then while everybody else is celebrating, having a good time, because we know Ray, he just got the big deal with RCA. All of a sudden, Bobby gets the phone call, and I'm like, man, as soon as this dude starts to have a good episode, which was at the end of the episode, something always happens no matter what. Cherie, she calls him. She tells him that ODB is in the hospital and ain't looking too good for him. And you can tell he's very concerned about his cousin because he's been thinking about him the whole episode. Even though he's been focused on music, he's been thinking about what went down in the past and how he wants to fix things. And now he's going to have the opportunity to do that. But we know ODB's story does not end well. This is just the very beginning, y'all. Y'all know it's going to get worse. I guess we got to sit back and see how everything's going to unfold this season and how they're going to write it out. But I will be dropping that episode two recap for you guys tomorrow. I'm going to watch episode two and three and have both of those recaps to you guys by Friday. I want to thank you guys once again for supporting your boy once again for the final season of Wu-Tang. It's been a hell of a journey, man. And I appreciate all the love and support, all the knowledge that you guys have dropped about this legendary group down below. And we're going to continue to talk about it. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.